Hey everyone, this is James from Mad River Homestead here in Southwest Ohio. If you've ever had to process a mid-sized animal, like a goat or a deer or even a hog, then you know one of the tough things is getting it hoisted to where you will be able to work on it at eye level. So today I'm gonna to start building a gantry. Now a gantry is a hoist that you can put a block and tackle on so that you'll be able to to pull that animal up to that eye level that you need. Now right here on the side of our barn is where we process our chickens on that uh, table there. So my thinking is to have the gantry right in this area right here. It's gonna be about eight feet wide and about 10 feet tall. So I've got all the lumber that I need, but I need to start by digging a couple of holes. Now digging holes with a post hole digger is definitely not my favorite thing in the world to do, but it has to be done. I'll be using 12 foot four by sixes for the support legs. And I wanted to dig the hole about three feet deep, giving me about nine feet to the bottom of the girder, which is the main beam that goes across the top. On this first hole, I ran into a pretty solid rock about two feet six seven inches something like that so i wasn't able to go a full three feet there so i ended up having to cut off a little bit of that as you'll see later in the video and once i had my holes dug i went and grabbed a bucket and got some of the gravel that i use when i'm doing a concrete pad just had some left over just wanted to add about a couple of inches to the bottom of each hole so that it would provide a little bit of drainage underneath the post. Now once I had the gravel in the holes and kind of leveled out, it was time to drop the posts in and then get those plumb. To do that, I just grabbed a few old scrap pieces of wood that I had laying around and screwed four of those on each post. As you can see, this just helps me to support it on all sides, and then I can use my level just to make sure it's all plumb. Once it was level, I grabbed my bucket again and went over to get some water to mix with the concrete. Didn't want to walk all the way up to the house to get water, so I just got it from my rain barrel out behind the chicken run. This is the water catchment system that I use to feed my automatic waterer inside the chicken run. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Now sometimes when I'm putting concrete around a post, I don't always add water because the concrete will pull in moisture from the ground around it. But in this case, with these being 4x6s, so the holes had to be quite a bit larger than you would for, say, a 4x4, I decided to go ahead and add some water and kind of mix it in the hole. The easiest way to do this is add some concrete, pour in some water, just kind of mix it up. I'm using an old fence post that I had laying around and just kind of mix it up and then add some more concrete, a little more water and just keep working my way up. Once I had that post concreted and setting up, I decided to go ahead and measure for my next post and when I did that I realized when I had measured for the holes I measured from the far side of my first hole so I had to enlarge my hole a little bit and which ended up taking more concrete and I was afraid I might run out of concrete but I ended up having enough for that post as well. Fortunately the chickens were close enough to guard the area while I ran around to the front to grab the rest of my concrete to finish up this post. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I knew that post on the right hand side was going to be a little bit taller than the other one. So the next thing I had to do before adding my girder beam was to cut that higher side down a little bit. So to do this, I first put a screw on the outside of the shorter post. Then I ran a line from that screw across the top of the post over to the other post and just scored a little bit of a line. Then I used my line level to make sure that I had it level. And the next thing I had to do was just mark some lines and then cut. Next thing was to add my girder beam to the top. 
I'm using an 8 foot 4x6 four for this. Before putting the girder beam in place, I wanted to go ahead and get my eye bolt installed. The eye bolt is what I will attach the chain block to for hoisting whatever I need to hoist in the air. I was hoping my drill would work, but I ended up having to use my extension, which by the way, if you don't have one, it is a great tool to have when you really need it. Putting the eye bolt on just consisted of using a washer on each side and tightening it down. Once I had the eye bolt in, just needed to get the girder beam up on top of the two posts. Now to fasten this down, I'm going to be using 10 inch construction screws. These are a heavy duty screw and I'm using two on each end. Now for my corner braces, I'm just using an old piece of 4x4 I had laying around. Cut a couple of 45 degree angles in each end using a 4 inch wood screw and a 3 inch wood screw. And you know, I found if you just tap that screw two or three times, you're not going to split that wood. A lot easier than doing all the pre-drilling. For my hoist, I'm just using what's called a chain block. I just ordered this on Amazon. This one's rated for 2,000 pounds, so it should be plenty for what I'll ever need it for. I'm a big one on reading directions, so I sat down for a couple minutes to read the directions, which basically, I'm paraphrasing, they basically said pull one side to go up, pull the other side to go down. <laughs> And I found out that's literally what it was. It's a very, very easy thing to operate. I brought the four-wheeler over and found out that it's just as easy to lift something heavy as it is to lift without anything on it. Next, I grabbed my chipper shredder. Uh, probably weighs about 200 pounds and hoisted that in the air just as easy as if there was nothing on it. Even had my four-year-old great-nephew try it out himself. And there you have it, the gantry crane, the gantry hoist crane, the gantry hoist. I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be called. I've seen it different ways, but I can tell you this is gonna come in handy and I am really happy with the way it turned out. As you can see, it lifted that ATV with no problem at all. There was no extra effort. That's what the block and tackle system will do. And so it's gonna come in really handy if I'm working on the ATV or a lawnmower, or if I need to uh, process one of our animals, send them to freezer camp, a goat, a hog, whatever it might be, that's gonna come in really handy for that as well. So thank you for watching the video. If you found it helpful, or if you uh, have any questions, please leave comments down below. I appreciate any of them. Thank you, and God bless you and your family.